MTD CNC have travelled to the WAF group today and I'm joined by Will. Now, Will, great story that we're going to be reviewing here today. Can you firstly tell our audience about your business and what you do? Okay, so we are a specialist problem solver. Well, it's very hard to describe what we do in a nutshell as a business. We cover multiple sectors, but from a machine point of view, we've only been at it for about two years. Uh, we actually bought it in-house uh, to actually start our own product development and our manufacturing of our own key products. We started off with a, a three-axis uh, Haas Super Mini Mill 2. Uh, after a few weeks, we quite quickly progressed to the machine, to the next of us, which is a UMC 500, which is a full five-axis CNC machine. The transition from a three to a five was paramount. Um, going from multiple setups to be able to hit a job in two setups was key, especially when this was our first and only machine we had in the shop. So we would always try and set up to hit as many parts as fast and as quickly as we can, obviously. Time is money, and when you've only got one machine, you haven't got much choice. No, I mean, this is remarkable, really. So you've only been CNC machining for two years. Did you have any experience before you purchased your first CNC? None at all. Um, my background is electrical electronic engineering. Um, as a business, we specialised in subcontract manufacturing. So whether that be oil and gas, nuclear, petrochemical, pharmaceuticals, we have our clients come to us with key issues and we design and create solutions to fit their needs. That's kind of where fast forward to two years ago with the machining, we had our sister company Securex uh, producing its first products and prototypes and what we found is as we would sub and prototype our equipment, our equipment out to be first designed, we had to learn a lot of lessons real fast and be able to rapidly adapt our designs and that's where it became key to make our equipment in-house. It also meant we were at the back of the queue for some, some contractors and having that power and bringing it in-house allowed us to start the phenomenal growth which we're seeing today. Wow, I mean being self-taught and using some of the state-of-the-art machines is, is, is phenomenal. Can you tell, tell me how you found that transition into CNC and, and can you tell me about the machine tools capabilities and, and some of the components and materials that you're cutting? Okay, so roughly about 85% of all the material we cut is stainless steel 316. Um, my favourite material to work with, to be fair, it's lovely material. Um, typically we are tricoidal everything. Um, we don't use any traditional tool paths. Everything is very cam driven. We simulate a lot of our jobs on the computer, check for collisions before we bring it out to the machines. We do a little bit of shorthand programming. Um, anything on the lathe is normally do right on the lathe. It makes a bit more sense. But anything complicated will always drive down the cam. We traditionally use uh, like long cuts. So a typical cut for me on stainless is probably about three, me three meters feed. Um, 40 depth of cut, 20% step over, and just driving out, chip breakers, get the swarf out, love it. So metal removal is key for you? Yes. Um, and, and what kind of tolerances are you working to? What kind of accuracy are you seeing from the UMC 500 and the other ass machines that you have on site? Okay, well, one of the things which we found was repeatability. Now, it's one thing to design your products and understand that not every product needs a silly tolerance. As a lot of industry has seen, you might be chasing a tolerance which is just not needed. But what does matter is the repeatability. And what we found with the house machines is we get that repeatability. We don't need the fancy bells and whistles, which some of uh, the more well-known brands, um, higher-end brands, might sell you. Thermal growth, for thermal stability, they are very stable machines. Active temperature compensation hasn't been needed. I set the machine up and you just follow it through, checking your offsets and it works. What repeatability are you achieving then, Will? Typically I get about five microns, which is Impressive. mental sometimes, but it works really well. So the accuracy, the, the rigidity, the stability of the machines is working for you successfully, such the fact that you're also evolving into other machine tools. So can you tell me, you know, from the UMC, what was your next machine tool purchase? Okay, so we bought a UMC 500, and then probably two weeks into the pandemic, uh, we actually purchased our first lathe, which is a DS30Y axis lathe. Twin spindle, uh, one and done style machining, uh, bar fed machine, which has been our turning workhorse. Um, now, 
fast forward to a few months ago, we purchased our third machine, third machine which we kept, which is the EC400, which has been a true workhorse, um, big cuts, nice and stable, repeatable, and just works. And also, if anything goes wrong, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to cost me an arm and a leg to get fixed. So, I mean, the EC400, I believe, is the first one in Europe. It's got six pallets on this horizontal machine. Um, Again, can you tell me what kind of work you're doing on this machine? What kind of other benefits in regards to productivity and efficiency is this machine tool giving you? Well, the machine is primarily centred around all our stainless work. So we produce a lot of equipment for hazardous areas. So it's stainless steel, 316. So our core components require massive amounts of removal. So we would probably take about 80 to 90% of the body of a billet out. So we want to do that as fast and as accurately as possible. Now, with the EC400, we can queue up a job previous, so the setup time is almost eliminated. So the pallets get swapped, and it just keeps that spindle turning, keeps the chips coming out. Sometimes we can't get the chips out quick enough, but that's because we like to push our machines. We had the, um, the minimal moving around the workshop when we first started, so it's part of well, the fun of it. Very, very impressive. Final question, really. You know, the relationship and the partnership with Hass, is this something that you're looking to evolve into the future? Yes, always. Um, we have partners. We, we talk, customers talk about customers and suppliers. We are old fashioned and we like to have partners. Give and take, they look after us, we work with them. I'm always looking for what we can do next. We are looking to expand. We're looking at two more machine tools in the not so distant future a larger five axis and a vertical.